How's it going on riders? Let's talk about driving lights. I'm Andrew and I'm the product designer here at Lone Rider and I make videos about how we develop products and this week we're going to talk about the interface between the human and the bike and the light. So we're thinking about developing some lights. Um, if you think that's a good idea let me know down in the comments down below and uh, while you're down there hit that subscribe button if you'd like to get more of this content and smash that like button too. So we develop products for motorcycles and this week I want to make a video about lighting. Specifically the interface between you as a human, the bike and the actual light. We'll come to the lights and all that good stuff later but um, one of the major issues or questions that I have is how do we give the most control to the user and in what form is that in? How do you use it? So if you have any ideas, uh, which is the best way or which is the good way you like, then let me know. But I've got a question for you. Let's check that out and let's jump into the computer. If you know our Instagram account, we have many adventure bikes and um, lighting is super important. So I drove around Africa um, and I didn't have any ox lights. And when I got back to Europe, I put on these ox lights and I was like, what was I doing? Why did I spend a year and a half in Africa driving around uh, and without the proper lighting? It was like day and night, literally. Um, especially, especially in Africa, when it gets dark, it gets really, really dark and really, really quick, about six o'clock. So your riding time is from the morning to about five because you've got to find a place to stay uh, before it gets too dark. Otherwise, yeah, it's just a bit, it's just more complicated. So um, I'm quite interested in these lights uh, because I put them on my bike and um, now I want to develop some custom lights that um, I think would be better for us as adventure riders. The question came, how do I control that? How do I control these lights? There's a couple of options um, and let's look at those. So the first option is like a, a bike switch cluster and you can use the connections or the, the buttons that are already on your bike to control the lights, a CAN bus system. I'll explain what a CAN bus system is in a minute. Uh, the second option is having a, like a, a, a switch that you can control um, and then also some of the components on the bike um, they will get triggered when you do something on your bike uh, for example the horn or switching to high beam low beam or indicating uh, and that's kind of like a mix between the two and then see i don't know maybe there's another option that i don't know about um, so that's why i'm asking you so the first concept is essentially pretty simple it goes from a battery to a fuse uh, the fuse goes to a switch and then the switch goes to the light. That's the most simplest setup you can have. The second is a canvas system, which is um, a little bit different. You've got a battery to a fuse. Uh, you should always have a fuse. And then you go into the canvas and the bike. So the bike and the canvas talk to each other and they give you a result. But that result needs to be done with the function of a human, like the function, like if the uh, if the rider decides to go left or right, they put on the indicator. The bike understands that. The canvas reads that information and then controls the the lights. However, you've set it. A canvas. What is a canvas? Basically, a canvas system is um, a controller area network. So that's the first part of it. And a bus, a vehicle bus, is essentially a network um, that controls all the components within a vehicle. So if you look on the right side, there's a picture and um, this bus canvas essentially talks between all the different parts of the vehicle, the motor, the transmission, the instrument panel and brakes and all that kind of stuff. For example, they know when you're braking and, and how hard you're braking and then that can change the suspension, for example, to make you grip better. It can link different parts of the vehicle together. Most of you guys might know uh, EasyCan, it's one of the best on the market or is the best on the market for motorcycles. Um, in my opinion, what this would be connected to your bike, like to the brains of your bike and then to the battery. And then you can go on to a computer and set what you want with these outputs. For example, there's a, you can see here, there's a few outputs. You can connect your two main lights to it, your horn to it, and any other accessories to this easy can. And so, for example, if you're on high beam, you're driving along the road and you want high beam, um, you put on high beam and the cluster, the clusters on your bike will relay that information to the canvas and the canvas will control the lights. So that's what a canvas does. Um, there's different types of canvas essentially. Uh, on the left side, you see um, uh, the BMW cluster and there's a K KTM cluster. Uh, and then you control these through an app. Uh, the positive thing with this is that you can, you know, you, this is right there. You don't need to push any extra buttons or install anything else. It's quite integrated with the bike, which is really, really nice. 
Um, the negative part of that is we're humans and we forget. If you don't write every day, if you don't use them every day, um, then we forget. So on the right side, this is a canvas interface for humans essentially, uh, which is just a switch. It's just on off switch. But what it does is represent the functions of these, uh, it, it re represents the functions. Because if you don't remember these functions, then you don't use them. So that's the, the positive and negative of that, um, those systems. So looking at my switch, um, I'm not sure what to do exactly right now, but essentially we need to switch between high beam and low beam. That's pretty important. We obviously need to go on and off, um, and we could we could do that with a switch or kind of like a dial. Um, uh, and then we can increase and decrease light intensity as well. You don't want to blind everybody coming towards you. So that's also done. Those are the three main things that we uh, we need. That's the base. This is the raw base that we need in our switch to control these new lights. Uh, yeah, so so essentially at the moment we can do a couple of ways. We can go a couple of ways if we're going to this for the switch and these lights. Um, we can go just a battery wiring harness to a light. So it's on or off. Um, there's not even a switch there. So when you, at, the, at this stage you can the lights will be always on. That's the most basic form. I put that in there as the most basic form. And then the second would be to have a battery, a wiring harness, um, and then some a switch to the light. That's what. That's the, it's the most basic thing that you need uh, because if you don't have the switch, then um, yeah, you're going to run low on battery pretty quick. Then the third option would be the battery a wiring harness, a canvas to the light, and that's the most integrated system. Um, that's a very cool system. I use that on my bike, and I like it. It's really good. Um, but I also, I, I also forget uh, lots of the stuff, um, and it's kind of you don't really need to change it that often. Well, you can set and forget it, which is really, really cool. Um, but if you like that system, let me know. And the other one is um, something else, like a battery to a wiring harness to something that we do uh, to, a, to the light. Um, that's my question, essentially, to you. And this is my question to you. Which system do you think is the best? A bike switch cluster, like a canvas system? Um, and if so, what one and how? What you like about it, what you don't like about it? and things like that uh, or a customized switch do you think the canvas system is not for you um, price wise or there's a reason why you don't use it or would want to use it or you just don't know about it um, and um, or you prefer to use the, just a switch that's standalone so you can see the function so you can control it as you want so let me know um, down in the comments below or yeah and um, let me know and we can start formulating all those ideas i'll i'll have a look at them all i'll make sure that i drop them down um, we can put that in a pool of ideas and then start from there and work off them so that's it we are going to build some lights and uh, these are going to be really really cool we've got some great ideas already we'll come back to light later we have a very solid idea for, and really cool ideas for the lights um, and we're going to work, work on that in the background a little bit and get it to a place where we can start um, telling you guys about it and getting your feedback on it. Um, but the switch is kind of like the main brains of this system. We need the we need the switch to be able to control the light. So we may, we need to understand how the switch works and what we want from the light. And those two work together. So any ideas, uh, any feedback, I'd love to hear about it. Um, and uh, if you haven't already, subscribe. Um, we make these videos about product development. And uh, while you're down there, hit that like button and leave us a comment uh, if you uh, have some great ideas that you want to, us to build into, the, into this project. Thanks. Take it easy. See you soon.